Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is actually a request from a few of you that have seen the painting I did for my brother for his birthday back in December. I showed it in my vlog and a few of you were interested in seeing the process and um, also in that vlog I was showing how I had started a duplicate for myself. I always find very difficult to do duplicates because I never do anything the same way. But I really tried and uh, I'm going to show you my process now. It didn't start, I didn't start filming until I had most of the color in the background done and I had painted in the silhouette. So I do apologize for, for that. I, I forgot. <laughs> I completely forgot. But uh, enjoy the rest. Around. I didn't take the same approach but this time around I used acrylic gouache. I did not want to use regular acrylic paint because well most of them are have a sheen to them. This is completely flat. It's actually quite matte. So I didn't want to use the paints that I had. I hope that when I remove some of that watercolor with uh, through the stencils that this is going to stay there. It's going to be an experiment. So now I'm at the point where I want to darken up the sky a little bit. I wasn't sure what color to use exactly. I'm going to go towards a lunar blue probably. I'll try it anyways and we'll see what that gives me. I'm going to start by applying a lot of it as dark as possible. So I'm picking up quite a lot of pigment and then I'm just going to grab some water and walk that down. I don't want to disturb the beautiful pinkish color I have here so I think I'm going to stop right, right here. So already that's a little bit darker. I might even drop some more of that lunar blue. Lunar blue is a cool color because the, the black and the blue pigments separate when it dries. So it's it can it can give you some pretty cool effects. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have some streaking, so I better stop here. Actually, let's just go down a little bit further. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to let this dry, then I'll do a bit of stenciling. This is from Ice Stencil. It's one of Patty's designs. It's called Pacman Stacks. Yeah, number PTP018. I'm just going to take a regular BB wipe. And I'm going to wipe around the moon. Um, yeah, I think, <laughs> because I've had a little mishap, um, I think that if I rub over the... Um, I'll find my words. I'll be back. <laughs> uh, if I rub too much over the acrylic wash it actually starts removing some of it. So it's not a huge deal because I can always paint over it, but um, I'm gonna be very careful. I do wanna have that clear patch right there in between us, and the glow has to be quite strong. But also, at the same time, my paper is peeling, so if I do this too much, it's definitely going to damage the paper. I do want to have something more visible around my shape. Okay, that's better. This one's a magenta. It's called Mosaic, number TM108. It. Um, I will list the supplies in the description of the video. I do want to have a cluster of other buildings but I don't want them so prominent not as much as the one I just did that's kind of silly it looks like a zipper 
not what I was achieve not the look I was going for. So let's layer this with something else. Okay, this is very wet. For some reason, this paper does not uh, respond the same way as the one that I used for my brother. And actually, it is from the same company, so I don't know. I mean, it's from the same stack. It's a little wet. Let's try and use this up on the other side. Oops. Now, when you have a stencil that's, yeah, when you have a stencil that's smaller, like these dots are quite small, you kind of have to put more elbow grease. <laughs> um, here, I may have to let the water react a little bit longer. Uh, at this point, I'm just layering some of these. Let me just do my can so you can see that. All right. I love this stencil so much. Uh, it's no secret. I really, really like Patty's stencils. You've heard me talk about them numerous times. I, I just, I love the geometric shapes. Nothing compares to that, really. Um, oh, I like this as it goes from small to big. Let's see if I can use this. Hmm, interesting. This reminds me of Victoria Peak in Hong Kong. That's the look that I'm trying to achieve. I will try to find a picture and put it somewhere here. I've seen this picture countless times on Pinterest and it just fascinates me. So essentially it's a high point in Hong Kong where you can view the city from that high point. It's called Victoria Peak. And uh, to me, it's just mesmerizing. I love cities. You know, that's no secret. You all know that. But these kinds of views, they just, ugh, they reach me. <laughs> they do something to me. Like, yeah. All right. I do want to add some in between these uh, silhouettes because otherwise it doesn't look real. I'm going to take this horizontally and see what I can do. Um, Oh, yes, I'm definitely removing the um, the acrylic gouache. <clears throat> it's okay, I'll just have to repaint over that. While I have all this dirty and stuff, instead of repainting it right now, I'm going to add the stars in the sky. For this, I'm going to use my Copic ink, which I have here in that dish. I haven't used it in a couple of days, so I'm going to have to reactivate it by adding a little bit of water. I have a floofy here, which I don't want. I so love that ink.
All right, and now I need to do the constellations. Actually, I can use these two dots here. So let me just join these two here. Oops. And I need one more here. This way and that way. Kind of is like that. <laughs> and Aries. Actually, some people kind of join these two as well. So I'm kind of like going to do like an incomplete line. I've seen it done both ways. And for Aries, uh, let's see here, let's start, start it here. There's a long one, and another one. Goes this way, this way. And then a little one here. All right, there we go. So I have a piece of acetate. I just dropped a little bit of that black wash, and that's what I'm using Acrylic by Holbein. I'm just gonna mix it a little bit. I'm using an acrylic brush. I don't wanna risk their chance of messing up my watercolor brushes. Sword. 
And I'm gonna fill that in. It looks kind of wonky right now, but when I remove the tape, it will make more sense. I don't have the correct brush to do that, but I think it's enough like this. Kind of balances everything out. All right, so I'm gonna let that part dry and then I'll be able to remove the tape. I have some bleed in, but um, that's okay because I think I'm going to frame that piece. I do like how it turned out. However, I feel that my brother's painting has a little bit more of a bright tone to it. Um, I used mainly mauves and, um, yeah, mauves because I think, I honestly, I forgot what colors I started with because I started this so long ago. But I do believe I used Moon Glow. I probably use Payne's Gray as well and Sujulite Genuine and also Kyanite Genuine. So it's a mixture of that in the background. I still love it and but you know it's very difficult to replicate exactly the same thing twice. But I do love uh, the meaning behind it. I have a souvenir. I know that my brother has the same and I can take comfort in that painting every time I miss my parents and just to show you this is the the photo in case you've missed my vlog this is the original photo that inspired the painting so this is circa a long time ago <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you uh, how long ago it was I can't really remember I must have been four in that picture and so that would make my brother 10 years old and this is um, in front of a cottage that we had up north. And I've, whoops, I've always felt that my brother would take care of me. Um, he has my back. And so if you look at the picture, his um, arm is behind me. And whenever my brother would talk about us being orphans now, because both my parents have passed away, it always reminded me of that photo, uh, the photo that I have the feeling that my brother is going to take care of me or we got each other's back kind of thing. So I really, really do love that painting. We both are into futuristic uh, movies and stuff like that. So that's why the cityscape in the back. And I don't know, it just makes me feel good. So I will definitely frame this. I will give it a place of importance in my studio or my home. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. I, again, I'm going to leave the links to the um, stencils that I use so that you can go and check them out. And I really do encourage you to go check out Patty's stencil because she has some awesome, awesome geometric generic shapes uh, stencils that you can use for a whole bunch of projects. And that's why I love them so much. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will see you later. Bye.